I'm beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Hey, welcome to another episode. If you do enjoy this video, consider giving it a like, as it does help the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. Last time we were trying to get a date. And this time, we're going down to South Park, going to have ourselves a time. Game number 31, South Park. Released in 1999, this game was developed by Iguana Entertainment and published by Acclaim. Yep, it's that South Park. There's actually three games related to the show on the N64, and this is the first one released. I remember hearing about this game back in the day, but I probably wasn't allowed to play it or something like that. The main single player mode in this game is just the single player campaign, so we'll complete that to beat this game. So the story of this game is that there's a giant comet crossing paths with Earth. And when it does, it starts causing all kinds of wacky things to happen in the small town of South Park. First thing you do is pick your character, of which you can be either Cartman, Kyle, Stan, or Kenny. I went with Kenny because, well, why not? I don't know. I actually don't think the characters have any different properties other than the dialogue they say in the game, but that could be wrong. The controls in this were kind of weird. You move around using the C buttons and aim with the joystick. It felt super weird, but I guess it makes sense. The game's a first person shooter, which is not at all what I expected from a South Park game. But hey, those are usually pretty fun, right? The first level has a ton of turkeys just coming at you ready to attack. Your main weapon to defend yourself is throwing snowballs. Doesn't sound like it hurt, but hey, you know when it gets like super cold and the snow's basically ice? Like, yeah, that would hurt. There's also a yellow snowball that has a lower rate of fire but deals more damage. I'll uh, let you figure out how the snowball turns yellow. So a bit into the level, we run into a huge turkey fortress. It kind of makes sense because we're like at a renaissance fair, but I don't know, how did the turkeys even take over it? We get the first new weapon here, the dodgeball. So with the snowballs, you have infinite ammo, but every other weapon is limited. The dodgeball's thrown way faster and deals more damage, and it also bounces around, which can cause it to hit additional enemies. This first level's really easy with just the basic turkeys being the only thing you fight, and after around 10 minutes of killing the turkeys, we beat level one, reaching Chef's house. So Chef tells us there's these big turkeys that are laying eggs with little turkeys inside, but if we really want to stop the turkeys, we need to follow them back to their hideout. Why can't he help us? He's an adult and we're just little kids, but okay. Level 2 starts out more of the same. We have to take out more turkeys. There's way more this time around though. I've never really watched South Park, but people in my chat were saying that these missions are all loosely based off episodes from the show, so that's pretty cool. Although it would have been from the very early seasons, since this game is from the 90s after all. I'd infiltrated the turkey fort but the door to it just wouldn't open. No matter what I tried, it stayed shut. I killed every enemy in the level, but nothing. Turns out the game glitched out because I eventually restarted the mission, and this time there was a giant turkey robot guarding the door. It just didn't spawn last time. Nothing a few dodgeballs to the face can't take care of. So these are tank enemies, and they'll start showing up in every level from now on. They're much stronger variants of the regular enemies, and they can spawn the base enemies. Inside the turkey fortress now, there was like a super purple river. Kind of weird. I fell in, and it like played some weird music jingle thing, and... I think this is supposed to be a secret? I don't know, it led to some dodgeball ammo, which is always nice. After taking down hundreds of turkeys, I made it to the heart of their fortress and the end of the level. So Chef's house somehow moved to where we are now, not sure how that makes sense, but whatever. He says the turkeys are nesting in a cave where a volcano erupted and we have to take them down to save everyone. Still not sure why he doesn't help us. I got a new weapon in this level, the Toilet Plunger Launcher. Only Kyle can use this weapon, so you can switch between characters when you have a weapon unique to them. This one isn't too different from the dodgeball. It might be a little higher damage, but I'm not sure. Some of you may think this game looks familiar, even though you've never played it. That's because this game was built off one of the Turok game engines. I 
think it was Turok 2, not 100% sure. It seems like an easy way to make some cash. Just take a popular TV show, slap it over an already existing game engine, bam, you get a bunch of money. Later on, I found another new weapon, the sponge dart gun. This thing is just a rapid fire machine gun that deals damage super quickly, but you run out of ammo fast, so it's pretty balanced. This mission's more the same, just killing turkeys and turkey tanks, with a lot more tanks than the last mission. At the end though, there was a boss, a massive turkey robot came from behind a door and it was time to fight. It's a pretty simple fight, it just runs around and tries to stomp you. I was struggling to figure out how to hurt it, and it turns out you have to get a headshot. Hitting its tiny head was so tough, but thankfully it got stuck on the eggshells on the ground and then it was a sitting duck. Or sitting turkey, I guess. After beating it, it shows a cutscene with Kenny chasing it, but he gets crushed by the door and dies. Can't believe they killed Kenny like that. So after this mission, it made me do a small side mission where I have to protect the town from tanks. This is because I let a tank escape in the previous mission. Basically, if you don't kill all the tanks, the game punishes you by making you do some of these protection missions afterwards where you have to kill all the tanks that you didn't kill in the previous mission. It makes the stakes really high because if you don't get them in this protection mission, you have to do the whole level over again. Finally, we were in the ultimate showdown with the turkeys. The turkey boss comes out to a huge arena for the final fight. It just walks around slowly like before, but now it can shoot lasers out of its head. And it can lay eggs that spawn tanks. Kind of brutal, honestly. This time too, there's a big bullseye on its butt, which you can hit to damage it. The boss isn't hard at all, but it has a ridiculous amount of health. It takes ages to kill it. But after 10 billion hits, it was dead. It shows the kids eating a Thanksgiving dinner out in the snow and like there's a zombified Kenny there. I don't know, this show's weird. And episode was done and the turkeys were no more. So after taking out the turkeys, Chef tells us we did a good job getting rid of them, but the comet's still messing with the town. He was going home and saw a weird green light coming from a warehouse. Everyone there was acting real strange and he thinks we should check it out. So instead of fighting turkeys, we're fighting like zombified versions of the people in town. The tanks in this episode are just giant people with a tiny head on their shoulder. Another new weapon in this episode too, the Terrence and Philip dolls. These are tossed like a grenade and create a poison effect that does huge damage over time. It's really good against tanks. I found the warehouse Chef was talking about, but my health was so low and there were so many enemies inside. The turkeys took a single snowball to kill, but these enemies take around five or so. It's just so much more brutal. Not to mention how much more health the tanks have. I had to put my kiting skills to the test because my health was basically at zero. Thankfully, these enemies are super slow, so it's pretty easy to kite them. Kiting being a gaming term where you run away from an enemy while simultaneously attacking them with projectiles. Thankfully I survived and beat the first mission. Somehow Chef's in the warehouse with his car and he tells us these are clones of everyone. And again, instead of helping us, he just drives off. This sucks. You may notice the game feed in this one's in a widescreen format. The game offers a high res mode where if you have the N64 expansion pack, but I don't think it actually changes the resolution, it just changes it to a widescreen format. Anyway, this mission isn't too interesting, just attacking more of the clones forever until they die. Eventually, the kids find where all the clones are coming from, a hole in the ceiling of a warehouse. After killing like 10 million more clones, there's a green glowing hole in the back. There's like this alien ray gun thing back there and Cartman throws a single snowball at it to make the entire warehouse explode. Yep, makes sense. So we finally defeated the clones, or so we thought. Chef drives by again and tells us there's still clones coming from the Art History Museum. So we kill a bunch more of the clones and make our way there. There's like this disgusting clone blob with a giant eyeball there and it's boss time. The hitbox on this thing is just awful. Maybe I was missing something, but it seemed like the only way to damage it was to hit its giant eye and only when it detaches itself. I don't know, this one was really tedious for sure. It only has two attacks. It can either send its eye out at you or it can spawn a bunch of regular clone enemies. The first attempt wasn't going so hot and I had my first death of the game. Uh, the deaths aren't too big of an issue because you can save between each level. But I guess if you die at the end of the level, yeah, that sucks. So back we go. This time I at least knew the boss's mechanics, so I was prepared. After running around and slowly damaging it with snowballs for what felt like an hour, I beat the clone boss. Episode 2 was complete. 
And hey, Kenny didn't die this time either. So the clones are defeated, but guess what? Chef tells us there's a new problem. Now some aliens are causing trouble in the town, and this time they haven't brought turkeys to wreak havoc. Their weapon of choice is cows. So we're dealing with evil cows too, I guess. They have about the same health as the clones, but they're way faster. And instead of giant turkeys for the tanks, we get giant flying saucers that drop cows down. Oh my god, this town's screwed. They're huge and it makes them easy to hit, but they have a lot of health and they can fly away and become inaccessible. Later on in this level, I ran into a new item, Mr. Hanky. I'm not familiar with the show, but I'm gonna assume that's a candy bar wearing a Santa hat right? Anyway, I believe Mr. Hanky acts as a shield to block a certain amount of damage, but not 100% sure. Later on, I picked up a can that made me much faster, but this caused me to fall down in a pit. No problem, there's some ledges here where the devs clearly wanted me to do some platforming to climb out. I'm awesome at platformers, so this should be easy, right? Yeah, nah. The platforming in this game is incredibly janky. It's by far the most frustrating aspect of the physics in this game. It seems like you just randomly fall down for no reason. And when I did get to the top, there was an alien there. It kind of looks like the Enderman from Minecraft, but anyway, it shoots like a sound wave at you or something and deals massive damage. And they're fairly tanky as well. The aliens are very dangerous. The worst part of this section is it forces you to get that speed up can to make the final jumps and it's just, it's so janky. At least there's no fall damage, so you can keep trying over and over. Finally, after so long, I finished the mission. However, four tanks escaped. Remember how I said you have to protect the town from any that escape? Yeah, so killing four alien spacecraft with only snowballs turns out it's really hard. Kind of impossible, actually. I died, and yep. I had to do that mission all over again. This time around, I made sure to conserve my ammo, as well as make use of the alternative firing method for the dodgeballs. See, it's not just the snowballs that have two types of shooting. If you use the other dodgeball ammo, they throw it much harder, and it's pretty efficient for taking down the alien ships. This time I beat it with only one tank escaping, which was real easy to defend the town from. So we end up at Chef's house again, and we complain about the aliens dropping cows on us. He's like, come on, that's the oldest trick in the book, guys. He says it's a distraction to keep us from their mothership, so we need to go straight to it. Also found a new weapon in this mission, the Warpo Ray, and this thing is amazing. It takes down the UFOs in about six shots, and it fires super fast one of the best weapons in the whole game. I gotta say, there is a pretty big selection of weapons in this game. My chat was telling me the multiplayer is really fun, but you know how this goes. We're doing single player in this series. After killing a ton of cows and spaceships, I made my way to a big arena. There was a different type of alien here. It was wearing a blue suit and it flew around, making it harder to hit. Fighting all the aliens here is super tough and my HP suffered a lot. I had to start using the warp array even on the cows because at this point my health was low and health upgrades were pretty uncommon to find. Further in, I turned a corner and an alien shot me before I even knew what was happening, down to 4 HP. Anything could one-shot me at this point. Thankfully for me, there was a platform with 40 HP of heals, which is exactly what I needed. After that, I ended up in a shootout with an alien. Thankfully, their projectiles are slow enough for me to dodge them at that distance. The brown box beside it is a full health upgrade, but unlucky for me, I never did figure out how to get in there. I tried dropping from above, but nope. Just had to keep going. I had low ammo, low health, and there was just cows and aliens everywhere. I decided to make a break for it. Dude, I'm running out of ammo. There's too many cows. Please. Where's the finish? Finish! Yes! Oh my god, dude. That was so close.
Thankfully, the warp array is OP, cause that tank would have ended me. This was the hardest mission so far, but it is absolutely not the hardest mission of the game. So then it shows a cutscene with all these aliens standing outside a giant spacecraft. Presumably it's the mothership. This mission is absolutely crazy. Basically you're in this huge open area and you have to kill every single alien for the ship to open up for you. There's plenty of ammo to go around, but these guys just hit so hard and they're everywhere. At this point, the game gives us the best weapon there is, the Egg Launcher. This thing deals insane damage. I couldn't tell at the time because the alien's health is too low, but this is the best gun. Anyway, I got owned on this first attempt. Not even close. After a few attempts, I finally killed them all and received the key to the mothership but my nightmare was just beginning. So now on board the ship, the kids jump into some green teleporter thing which takes them inside. The inside of the ship is a series of different small rooms with aliens all over the place. There's a few instances of ammo and power-ups being on crates or something, but good luck making the jumps to get up to them. I wonder if the devs even tested getting these, cause it's impossible. The turkeys even make a brief comeback in this level. It's got it all. Nothing's too crazy till you get to this room with a bunch of blue aliens aliens flying around. They're just so hard to hit. Then after this, there's a new enemy, the giant alien in the next room. This takes way more hits, but it still does a ton of damage. Then after that, there's a room where the aliens are all up on top of crates, and this room had bad lag, making it hard to hit them. But finally after that, there's a small room with over a dozen aliens. I died instantly here so many times. And remember, when you die, you go all the way back to the start of the mission. I needed something to get me through all these enemies, and I found just that thing. Most of these power-ups felt impossible to reach, but one of them, I found an elevator that lets you up to them. And I'm real glad I figured this out, because there's a full health upgrade as well as a bunch of warp ray ammo. This was huge, because since it's a full heal, I could just run back anytime and make the best use of it. So I'd wait until I was down to like below 20 health and then run back and get it. So now making it past that horrible room, the next room has a bus with a ton of goodies on top. Top. Unfortunately, I never found a way to get up there. Oh well. Then there's more of those clones from the previous episode, followed by a room with lots of those blue aliens. These things, they just suck to fight, especially when the frame rate's so low. After somehow making it past this, there's then a door guarded by a bunch of giant aliens. Yeah. Good luck getting through all of this without dying. Finally, after getting past that room, there's a body armor upgrade dangling just out of reach from us. I really didn't want to have to do that mission all over again, so I spent literally like 10 minutes trying to make the simple jumps to get up to it. It's so, so janky. Finally, I did get it though. And after all that mayhem, there's the boss fight. I have no clue what it is. It's maybe like a brain or something powering the ship. I don't know. It's a really uninteresting boss, honestly. It just sits there in one place and shoots lasers everywhere. I didn't want to die, so I brought out my secret weapon, the cow launcher. I held on to it because I only ever found two rounds for it, but honestly, it's not that great. Wish I knew the egg launcher was OP at this point because, yep, I died, and I had to go all the way back to the start. Pretty unfair that there's a boss at the very end and no checkpoint. After well over an hour on this mission, I got to the boss with pretty good health and quite a lot of ammo left. This was it, my chance to get out of this prison. Well, guess it didn't matter, cause for some reason the boss, it, like, couldn't hit me. I don't know, like... It was like a glitch or something? Why didn't this happen on any of those other attempts? Oh well, at least I got out of the mothership. So with the aliens defeated, we go back to Chef to hopefully hear things are back to normal. Well, not exactly. Apparently now there's killer robots at the Seismic Center. Man, this town is really screwed up. This mission gets crazy in a hurry, with a tank being right at the start. It spawns all these robots with TVs on their heads, and I think it's showing the creators of South Park on them. I couldn't figure it out at first, but you have to attack it in the yellow flap thing in the front to damage it. These robots are ridiculously tanky as you might expect. Not even worth trying to kill them with snowballs, and even the warp array, it takes three hits to kill them. They also have super janky interactions where they just yeet you across the level, which is just so frustrating. Whoa! It was in this mission that I discovered how powerful the egg launcher is, as it kills the tanks in just two hits. 
Even the warp array takes quite a lot to do that. Not too much special about this level other than killing lots of robots. So Chef tells us the robots are being manufactured in a factory near a pond. He wants us to go there and put a stop to them. This mission had this awful part where the robots surround you on all sides and then they just always seem to yeet me no matter what. Outside of that, the second mission doesn't have anything really noteworthy until you reach the fortress where they're being manufactured. This place is just littered with robots robots, they deal super high damage and it's hard to hit them since the game's so laggy. Somehow though, I managed to get through all this on my first try getting there. So in the next level, Chef doesn't help us out unfortunately, but guess we're heading to the base where all these robots are being assembled. This level doesn't really have anything interesting until you get to the factory itself. There's these giant machines in there with huge robot heads and conveyor belts. They just keep spitting out more and more robots and I didn't know what to do and just got wrecked. It took nearly a half hour to figure it out, but I had to shoot those giant heads on the machines to blow them up. Most of that half hour was getting back to this point after dying, but still. The machines take a ton of damage and they just eat up so much of your ammo. There were just more and more rooms of these machines and it was eating up all my ammo like I was running out. The biggest surprise was yet to come though. What happened next, none of you will be able to predict. <laughs> What just happened? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it just started floating. Oh my god, man. This game. That's right. Remember how those robots like to yeet you when they run into you? Well, this one yeeted me all the way into space. The game didn't say I died, it didn't freeze, it didn't soft lock, it just like reset itself and brought me to the title screen. It is one of the weirdest bugs I've ever seen. It might be like a soft lock prevention thing, I don't know. So after whatever that was, I made my way through the factory again and this time all the way to the end. There waiting for me was the boss. Basically a bigger and badder version of those tanks from before. It has a machine gun it uses to fire bolts at you and it occasionally spawns robot minions to attack. Basically, you gotta wait till it opens its flap to damage it, but you can also hit it through a tiny window in it if you aim right. Thankfully, I had plenty of ammo for the egg launcher, which it's just busted. It took this thing down in about five shots on my first try. There's like a cutscene where the people in the factory think it's for saving them, then Kenny gets killed by the boss's head landing on him. Rip Kenny again. So now Chef tells us the final phase of the comets affecting the town. Now there's evil toys trying to kill everyone. Makes sense, I guess. These toys absolutely don't mess around. Not only are they toys, so they're tiny and hard to hit, but they deal massive damage. Look how these tanks just tear through my HP. Thankfully though, for the most part, they're very low health. I eventually ran into some toy doll that barfed on me, and that was the end of that attempt. A good strategy for fighting them ended up to be using the machine dart gun to just hit them all. Most would die in one or two hits. The Terrence and Philip dolls are good too to just create an area that would kill them. The first part is basically just a giant gauntlet of killing toys until these SWAT vans move out of the way. After they do, we run into the tank of this episode, a big old jack-in-the-box, except it's like a creepy donkey thing in business attire with weird catchphrases, and it sounds like Jack Nicholson. How's it going? After beating up a few tanks, the first mission was complete. In the next mission, we have to get past all the toys in the parking lot to gain access to the toy store. You know, it makes sense that that's their base of operations. A bit into this level, there's a small cutscene where Cartman declares his hatred for dolls and teddy bears, but we learn he actually does like those things. This mission doesn't have anything specifically hard, it's just really really long and these toys can outnumber you in a hurry. It's pretty easy to get your health dropped in an instant. There's a huge battle in front of the toy store where you have to take out dozens of toys and tanks. It's pretty tough but not too hard. The main issue is it eats up a ton of ammo which we're about to find out that's a big problem. So now we're inside the toy store, the headquarters for all the toys. I was used to the previous two missions giving me tons and tons of ammo upgrades, but nope, 
Not this one. There's hardly anything to pick up in here. This is awful because I used almost all my ammo in the last level. The first room has a tank, which would be easy to beat, but I have nothing powerful to hit it with. And the next room, another tank. I have even less ammo to fight this one. With nothing to fight with, I had no chance. I needed to come up with a plan. On my next attempt, thankfully, I found something big. If I stood in a specific corner, the tank couldn't reach me to roll over me, and it wasn't able to shoot me because I was too close. This was huge, because then I could just kill it with snowballs, which I have infinite of. It was basically required for me to be able to beat the mission in this state. So with this new trick at hand, I made it past three rooms with tanks. Then there was a fourth room with tons of the regular toys. Fighting these is way worse than the tanks, because I can't cheese these things and get them stuck. Luckily, I have a lot of ammo for the dart machine gun still. After this room, we had made it. The big boss of the toys. It's some huge robot thing that looks like a transformer. Autobots, roll out! Thankfully, the devs were kind enough to put an egg launcher with plenty of ammo in here. Guess they do show a little bit of mercy. The boss doesn't do too much, it just kind of strolls around the room slowly and it can either launch one of its hands at you or start running around really fast. Both of these deal quite a lot of damage. Early on I found the way to damage it too, just shoot it in the chest where the big M is. The egg launcher took it down to half health in just three shots, this is gonna be easy. But once it got to half health it like switched modes and ran to this charging station where it regained all its health. There's a button you can press to make it stop healing. Alright, cool, I get how this guy works. But something was wrong. After it hit that station, I couldn't damage it anymore no matter what I tried. I thought I'd try hitting the button again to see if that would allow me to damage it, but... Yeah, then I received an absolute beatdown. Down to 0 HP before I knew it. This was tougher than I thought. So now I had to go all the way back through the level again. And remember, I have to kill these tanks with snowballs only if I want to have a chance at this. It takes quite a long time to get back to this boss. Basically, the boss is free until you get it to half health. Then it can start healing itself and charge at you with wheels and shoot lasers. Basically, the switch on the charger is there to get it to stop healing itself and nothing else. It turns out maybe hitting it from the front is a bug or something, I don't know. Because you're actually supposed to shoot it in the back when you can hit it every time. Finally, I understood this boss's mechanics and I just had to survive. After basically an hour and a half on this level, I had its health pretty low. I just had to focus and I could finish it off. Please! Finally, this evil mission was over. This boss was so brutal. Not necessarily the boss itself, just getting back to it. Felt like a Dark Souls run back on steroids. After killing it, it like shows a cutscene where Cartman is playing with dolls, then Chef congratulates us on saving the day. No thanks to him. Then a safe falls on Kenny and he dies yet again. Rip Kenny. And the credits roll. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it. My journey to beating South Park. I had no clue what I was getting myself into when I drew this game, but man, it was rough. The controls just don't feel super smooth, like it's hard to aim where you want to. There's quite a bit of lag and there's a lot of bugs. It's also just brutally difficult and lacks any kind of checkpoints. I could see people liking this game back in the day, but I wouldn't really recommend it playing it nowadays. There's just much better alternatives on the N64. I gave it a 4 out of 10 for enjoyability and an 8.5 out of 10 for difficulty. It was just flat out hard. But yeah, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you did enjoy the video, consider giving it a like as it does help the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. But yeah, thanks for watching and here's a sneak peek at what is coming next. We have 354 games on the list. Yoshi's Story is not the last game. What will we get? 3, 2, 1, go! 79? What is that? Dr. Mario 64? Oh man, what is that gonna be like?